A public university that has a history of woke programming announces a new LGBTQ plus student scholarship. Several universities issue pro-abortion statements following the historic Supreme Court decision. And a conservative fought to win a student government seat on his campus after being canceled for his Fox News interview. We will be discussing these three stories and more. My name is Emily Sturge and you are watching Campus Countdown. In our third story this week, a public university announces a new LGBTQ plus student scholarship. The University of Hawaii at Hilo announced in a statement that an anonymous donor endowed three million in scholarships funding a scholarship for students specifically who identify as LGBTQ+. Named the Chrishell LGBTQ+, Endowed Scholarship, this award is the latest woke initiative we've seen from HU Hilo, but certainly not the first. The university has a history of woke policies and initiatives, including a center for LGBTQ students and a degree that explores queerness and sexual identity. The University of Hawaii Hilo's LGBTQ Plus Center provides resources and programs for students and faculty, including a safe zone ally workshop to educate people about the bullying, harassment, and discrimination that LGBTQ Plus people experience. The center's website also provides a list of identities, orientations, and terminology often used by the queer community that are helpful to know when becoming a good ally. The list includes terms such as mahu, which is described as a third gender identity, and two spirits, which the list defines as a Native American term for individuals who identify as both the masculine and feminine identities. While students at this university are learning about sexual identity in the classroom and studying in their safe spaces, I am nervous to see where the future is headed. College students are the next generation of leaders. They will run businesses, government, nonprofits, and other powerful entities. Rewarding students for their sexual identities and encouraging degrees in LGBTQ subjects will only weaken the next generation of leaders. Will the students who spent four years earning a degree in queerness have any applicable skills that they will bring to the job market or to society? My guess is that woke corporations like Starbucks will be receiving a boatload of job applications from students like these in the coming years. In our second story this week, several universities issue pro-abortion statements. Here with all the details on that story is campus reform correspondent Aubrey Tuell. Following the Supreme Court's historic decision to overturn Roe v. Wade last month, colleges and university leadership quickly issued public statements. A campus reform analysis of 40 college statements found that 62% of the announcements publicly supported Roe v. Wade. Stanford Medicine, University of Pennsylvania, and Harvard's University's FXB Center for Health and Human Rights were among the 25 institutions that released statements opposing the Supreme Court's decision. Dartmouth College, University of California, Davis, and University of Washington Medicine issued inclusive language in their statements. Dartmouth College Geisel School of Medicine promised to promote abortion access for women and people of all genders, while UC Davis and UW opted to use the phrase, people who can become pregnant. In contrast to this, only six universities put out pro-life statements. Liberty University, Franciscan University of Steubenville, Catholic University of America, Notre Dame University, and Marquette University all reaffirmed a commitment to respecting the sanctity of life. Each statement traced back to the school's religious roots, issuing a call to action for the pro-life movement to continue supporting both the mother and child. Being pro-life means much more than opposing abortion, the Catholic University of America statement read. The pro-life movement is about building a civilization of love through a commitment to life at all stages. Being pro-life begins with acknowledging the reality that it is morally incorrect to intentionally kill an innocent human life. Universities are censoring this moral idea and instead encouraging the disposal of human life. That is the opposite of what campuses should be fostering. Instead, campuses should be identifying truth, confronting uncomfortable issues, exchanging opinions, and challenging students to think differently and more deeply about issues. 
In our top story this week, a conservative fought to win a student government seat after being canceled for his Fox News interview. Campus reform correspondent Sterling Mosley recently defied cancel culture to win an important political victory on his campus. Last semester, the University of Texas at Austin student government denied Mosley a university-wide representative position because he appeared on Fox News to defend the school's song, The Eyes of Texas. Yet, Mosley did not accept the result, especially after the student government had nominated him unanimously before news of his Fox News interview broke. He decided to run for the seat, and he won. Mosley appeared on Fox News on September 8, 2021. During the interview, he spoke about the importance of the Eyes of Texas, which at the time was subject to a federal civil rights complaint for allegedly creating a hostile environment for students of color. Student government members voted to block Mosley's unanimous nomination in a 14 to 10 vote after they became aware of the interview. Mosley explained to campus reform that after the setback, he decided to run for the position rather than be appointed and mobilized a campaign to win back the seat. Quote, now I'm serving as a university-wide representative, the same position I was supposed to fill via appointment for the upcoming semester, he said. I'll be able to give conservative students a voice and really share my viewpoint, which I've already begun thus far, he stated. Mosley's story is just one example of how conservatives are silenced on college campuses, whether it's in the classroom or by student organizations. It is so important for conservatives like Mosley, like myself, and like so many others to be active on our campuses and use our voices to fight against the wokeism that is indoctrinating the institutions we attend. Props to you, Sterling, for being a leader and for inspiring others to do the same. Now it's time for my favorite segment, the Woke Tweet of the Week. Indiana University's Office of the Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Multicultural Affairs released a tweet this week that stated, Office of the Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Multicultural Affairs and Indiana University Foundation Affinity Giving Circles announced a combined total of over $490,857 and grant funding to support diversity and inclusion efforts to over 40 projects across Indiana University. The $490,857 grant will help the university fund and expand their already woke initiatives, including improved access to gender-affirming hormone therapy, a gender-affirming closet on campus where LGBTQ students can get free clothes that match their identity, and video tutorials, including binding for beginners, period advice for trans guys, and an everyday makeup tutorial for trans women. Indiana University has been ranked best of the best by Campus Pride Index, which is a benchmark tool for LGBTQ students to determine which colleges are going to be the most inclusive. Essentially, IU is pouring massive amounts of money into LGBTQ plus programs that certainly don't prepare young adults for the workforce. Colleges and universities would better serve students by helping them fund their education through academic scholarships or by implementing other resources to prepare students for their careers rather than funding programs that make it easier and in some cases encourage students to change their gender. That wraps up this week's edition of Campus Countdown. To read about these stories and more, visit campusreform.org. Remember to like and subscribe here on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Campus Reform. I'm Emily Sturge, and thanks for watching Campus Countdown.